Hi everyone, welcome to episode 2 of Cheltenham Chart and this week we've got almost too many horses to talk about the Elliot Battalions were out at Down Royal but there was lots of other horses coming out making comebacks, making their debuts over hurdles or fences and we'll talk about them all a lot of them we have to reserve judgement on a little bit until we see them again they probably haven't beaten much etc but We'll talk about them all, one in particular who I really liked, and we'll leave him to last, so we'll get straight on to it today. Nicky Henderson's notoriously got a good two-mile novice hurdler. Could Will Mount be that horse? I was impressed with his performance at Newbury. He tends to take his good novices out at Newbury. It was an impressive win, and I think he will take top rank whether he's quite good enough to be winning Supremes or Ballymore. You still have to see him again, really. But this was a mighty performance first time out. It is harsh on uh, Neil Mulholland to be losing a horse like this after two bumper wins. And a lot of people won't be happy with the horse being moved to Nicky Henderson. But he has got an impeccable record at making these horses better. And, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see how he performs next time out. But what a performance he put in. He could do no more than he did in his first run. On the same card, uh, Ikea Allen qualified for the Pertemps final. Could this be a potential JP plot for Willie Mullins in the Pertemps? I certainly see no reason why not. He, will, he has got a huge reputation of a horse. He's not really done it yet. But this, all he had to do was qualify... He'll go there with a decent chance. The Pretemps is never usually too hot a race, so he's definitely a horse with potential to be backed in this race and to run well in this race. At Clon Mel, a lot of people thought Muscada could turn over Alagori de Vasi and develop into a Mare's Chase contender. I don't think she did much to say that she would be a mare's chase contender, but she could be just a spring mare. She finished very, very tired, Muscada, and um, this was nowhere near good enough considering she was getting a lot of weight as well. She will need to be a spring mare, and she's got to do a lot better than this. As for the winner, Alagori Givasi, the betting said that she was going to run a really big race, and although she clouted the first, she has won quite well. I'm just not sure about her short price for the festival. I think something could come out of left field in this division. It could be Dino Blue, but is she going to be staying? She won at Nace on the Sunday. I do wonder if she'll stay strongly enough over two miles four to be a player. As for Alagori Devasi, she's probably the rightful favourite. She's just not a favourite I would back at that price and especially I wasn't particularly impressed with her performance at Clonmel although she was very good. I'm sure Connections of Aloha are just delighted to see that he's back on the track. He wasn't flashy or flamboyant in his win. There were none of the magnificent jumps that he normally puts in but he was workmanlike, economical and he's back and he's back in the running for the Ryanair. He's into 72. You have to take his well-being on trust. He's got to come out of the race. He's got to be fit enough to run again. I think next time out is the time to judge him. But at least he's fit and well. He's back on the track and he won nicely. One horse to talk about at Exeter before we get on to the Gordon Elliott show at Dan Royal. Stay away, Faye. I'd have to sit on the fence. I'm sorry, but I'd have to sit on the fence on this performance. While it was decent, it didn't blow me away. But this horse I don't think is ever going to be flashy. It's never going to win half the track. Especially not when running against decent rivals. He's going to just do enough. But this is an Albert Bartlett winner. Certainly Luke's Brown advisory distance would be a minimum. Like I say, a decent performance without actually blowing me away. On the Gordon Elliott show at Down Royal, it's hard to judge which ones are the top ones and which horses are just 
good enough to win at Down Royal, but may not be festival class. Brighter days ahead, I'm sure we'll go to Cheltenham. She's into favourite now for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. It was a fair enough performance. She's beaten horses who, you know, she was she was only two to one on the day, so it wasn't like she was a, a one to five shot. But she's beaten them nicely, and they were both well touted, Bantam Gal and Williamstown Dancer. So, you know, they weren't they weren't fools that Brighter Days Ahead beat, and I think she's got a decent chance. I just wouldn't be parting with my money for the Mayor's Novice Irish Point. This was just a starting point in his season and they say it'll be a tilt at the stairs hurdle for him. Found the 50 was really impressive. I liked his jumping. I think he could be a Turner's horse. I, th I was quite surprised at his price of 20 to 1 off the race. I think that's reasonable value. But you'd have to wonder, is he definitely going there? Firefox is a strange one in a bumper. I don't even know, and I, I should know, and I should have found out, but I don't know if Firefox can even run in the champion bumper this season after winning bumpers last year. It was a strange decision not to go over hurdles. Maybe they're just running in one bumper before they go over hurdles, so he's not really a betting proposition until we know what his target will be. Down memory lane, highly touted and won really easily in a nothing race and we just have to see this horse in a better grade before you can make an assessment of him. Jerry Colomb, Gold Cup, potential horse. I wasn't particularly impressed. Others were. He could have quite easily got beaten by the distance that he won by. And then everyone would be crabbing him and saying that, you know, he wasn't quite good enough for Gold Cup, but he's managed to win by a neck instead of being beaten by a neck. Um, I'll reserve judgment. I wouldn't be backing this horse to beat Gallop in the Champ at the moment, although he looks an extreme stayer. And the three mile two of the gold cap on the different course is definitely going to suit him compared to the Brown Advisory. I can't back him yet. I certainly can't back him yet. And he's only going to have one more run and he's going to go to a gold cap. I wouldn't back him to beat Gallop in the Champ, where others may. Il Atlantique. One at Gowden Park now. Willie Mullins can tend to bring out a good horse at Gowden. So, although he only did what he should do, he was particularly impressive and uh, he could be anything. But his bumper form said he should win like this and he has won like this. So, until he goes up in grade, you won't be able to tell much about this performance. Dino Blue, like I said, won at Nace. I have to say I was impressed with Slade Steel. Now, I'd been told that Slade Steel was improving quite a lot at home just in the past three weeks. And that if he keeps improving like he has, he could be a sort of dark horse for some big races this season. And he won really nicely from King of Kingsfield. I'm not sure about King of Kingsfield. Is he as good as what the Elliot Yard think he is? He, he seems to down tools quite quick if he starts to get put up to him but I thought Slade Steele was impressive he's one to look out for uh, as the season progresses because he'd go under the radar a little bit he shouldn't have been 72 in this race if, if people had known he was well fancied so he could be a one for under the radar for later in the season the novice chase stroke bumper had good horses in it it's hard to make an assessment of a race where there's uh, a lot of fences taken out Grange Clare West, he caught me out last season, running really well and winning. And then his season disintegrated. So I can't get too overexcited about his performance. If he can keep this level of form up, he's going to really, really be a good chaser. Big horse. But I can't trust him after last year. Hart would run a really good race. I'm sure connections at Corbett's Cross would be a little bit disappointed but he's in the green and gold and you never know what they really expected and what they were looking for in this race. So they maybe aren't disappointed at all. And finally, I'll get on to the horse who really impressed me over the week. And it's one that will cause con controversy, but we'll get on to him now. I love the performance of Iroko at Warwick. I was deeply impressed. I see lots of cribbing of the time. I see lots of cribbing of he's a British horse and he won't win 
any novice chase at the festival. Well, last season, British Horses won three out of the six novice races at the festival. He's from a yard who are really going places and on a steep upward curve. For me, they're one of the most up and coming yards in the country. And I have to point my viewers to uh, another uh, YouTube channel in the Final, uh, Final Flight podcast. They seem to have good ties with the uh, Greeno and uh, Guero Yard. They've been in the yard, they've done a video in the yard, and they've also done a preview video with a couple of the guys from the yard. So they have strong ties to this yard, and uh, everyone who's talking about Iroko, his work rider, the other work riders, the schooling lads, they've all talked about this horse being very good on their shows. So I'd point you to their shows and go and watch them yourself. But everything they said about the horse was really positive. And everything I saw in the race was really positive. And I don't really care that the race was 30 seconds slow. And I don't really care that the British novices are usually behind the Irish novices. This horse won a Martin Pike last season. If we look through the Martin Pike winners, there are good Martin Pike winners and there are poor. But let's not forget the gallop in Deschamps won a Martin Pike. Sarah Deschamps won a Martin Pike. Champagne Classic. Juan Martin Pike, Don Poli, Juan Martin Pike. And they all progressed into top, top class races in the next couple of seasons. Iroko, for me, his jumping performance was superb. I think he'll be better when he goes faster. And I think the 7 to 1 with William Hill, for this horse, any race at Cheltenham is way too big. I wouldn't be pricing this at more than 7 to 2, 4 to 1 for any race at Cheltenham. I think. Although most people think he's a brown advisory horse, that he could be a Turner's horse for me. He, he looks quick enough for the Turner's, in my opinion, over fences. His jumping was really good. He was a little bit sticky over the first couple. But once he started to jump, I thought he was really good. Warwick's a good test of a jumper. It's also got that, a lot of turns like Cheltenham has. I was impressed, really, really impressed. Others may disagree with this assessment of Iroko. People will point to the slow race, etc. That's well and good. I thought it was a good race. I thought he took them to the cleaners. And I think that he is a serious, serious horse going forward. So that's my view on Iroko. And that's my view on the other horses who ran this week. You may disagree with my opinions. You can put your opinions in the comments below. I can only give you my opinion. So for this week, a lot of good horses out, a lot of big names came out. We saw the return of Alaho. What did you make of his performance? Do you think Will Mount could be a big novice for Nicky Henderson? And do you agree with my assessment of Iroko? Iroko, definitely the horse to take from this week for me. And I know a lot of people will crib that. But I think the 71 any race for William Hill is absolutely massive. He could go to the Brown Advisory. If his season starts to go a little bit awry, he could go to the plate, he could go to the Altima. But for me, I think he's either a Turner's or a Brown Advisory horse, and I think he'll go either with a really, really good chance in March. I'm looking forward to seeing him again already. I'd take him to the Dipper so he gets experience of the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, Cheltenham Fences, sorry. Um, but for me, he's the horse to take out this week. So I'll let you get on with your week now. I'll be back to you after Cheltenham's Paddy Power meeting. Thanks for watching the video today and bye for now.